quick, what time is it? Um, doesn't really matter, <laughs> except that we're now a few seconds closer to December 5th when the opening curtain will go up on the Kansas City Ballet's all new version of the Nutcracker. Back in July, we started our coverage of this huge undertaking, a $2 million reboot of what's already a very successful tradition in Kansas City. This week, resetting the stage picks back up on the action with choreography, costuming, and a whole bunch of kids to boot. Outside, it's your typical hot, humid August afternoon. Inside the Bollinger Center, snowflakes, sugar plums, and holiday finery are what's on the minds of nearly 250 young dancers who filed through the doors. This is amazing. I mean, this is what it's all about. Come December, the youngsters chosen from these auditions will step on stage at the Kaufman Center and into the history books as part of the new nutcracker that Devin Carney is racing to unveil. Yada de yum, de yum, de yum. I was a dancer. I always dreamed of doing nutcracker and such an honor to be able to do it here. Two turns. If you're surprised to see the man in charge working this hard down in the trenches, well, you don't know Devin. Turn, cross, slap, clap, open. They are our future. Not only are they our future dancers, but they are our future audience members, and they are our future art teachers, and they are future math teachers who understand what it's like to be a dancer because they did that at Kansas City Ballet when they were 12. Two, three, and four. Between now and opening night, that'll mean as much as 15 hours per week devoted to the kids in the company. Good thing Devin's got technology to turn to. That same iPad, which helped him sort through the casting crunch, also plays a key role in another important task, replacing the classic Balanchine choreography with movements of his own. I can look at something Tempe Ostergren did four months ago, and I can say, oh, okay, you did it like this. You know, I show it to her, and I actually can look at it while she's doing it, and I can say, oh, wait, no, you went that way, not that way, you know? And it's awesome. Plie up and parabre, parabre, arabesque, susu, up. I knew I wouldn't remember it. I just, I knew that. And I knew the dancers wouldn't either. No offense to them, but, you know, everybody's got a lot squished into their brain. When you're a dancer, there's a lot of steps that have to be in there. So, even as the snow corps de ballet, works to master the patterns Devon envisions for them. One and two and Sutanucha. Okay, we'll try that again. They're simultaneously learning another large piece. This is Petals. It won't be danced until May, but now's the only time its choreographer and stager could show them the steps. And there's even more, complete with sword play. Five, six, seven, eight. Between now and The Nutcracker comes October's production of The Three Musketeers, filled with the kinds of challenges that swashbuckling brings. If all this has Carney particularly stressed, he isn't letting it show. We're on pace. Everything is a process. It's rare when something actually gets built, sewn, or painted, uh, and the first time's perfect. Oh, well, not that long. That's Costume like that. fittings, like this one with designer Holly Hines and maker Coco DuPont, both based in New York City, are a part of that process. A chance to see how what looks great on paper actually works for the dancers who will be wearing them. Feels great. There are certain moments in the Nutcracker that I call the ah moment, and we're counting on that. So like when a certain person comes out in act two, we know that we hope we hear the ah over the orchestra because they think it's the cutest thing they've ever seen. Just to give us enough room so we don't. Like her friend, Alain Vais, who designed the sets, Holly brings a world-class resume. Yes, ABT, New York City Ballet, the Bolshoi, and on and on. But she says a chance to create something of this magnitude doesn't come along often. Hide a collar, okay? And much like the scenery, so many costumes are needed in such a short time. She's had to distribute the workload literally from coast to coast. We have 27 makers making the Nutcracker. And as far as I know, 
That's the largest amount of shops that have ever worked on the Nutcracker. One of those 27 sits just minutes away. KC Costume is where menagerie members like the Mouse King will be getting their heads on straight. It's a work in progress. Uh, yeah, we, we dropped that one. Yeah. They're great guys over there. They're trying really hard to help me envision what I want. And uh, my assistant's really good at uh, crafts and knowing what the current best techniques are. And I'm sort of out of that world because I've been doing tutus and romantic skirts. Hmm. Okay. You don't want the head bobbling around, so it has to really be secure to their head. But if the minute all this is closed in around you, or if you have a big nose, as I've drawn big noses on the mice, if that's all blocked in, you can't see the floor, and you can't see your feet. This appeals to me. I need my dancers to be able to breathe. Number one, you've got to have dancers that can breathe inside these, these heads. So that was really great to have that chance to go over there. The costume designs are coming up off the pages and becoming three-dimensional, real objects that you can touch, they're tactile, you can feel. You see it on a dancer and see if it's gonna move well for the choreography I have in mind. It's no longer talk, and, and I really love that about the process right now, and it's so inspiring for me. And pirouette, développé. Great, okay, so let's do that much first. What's interesting about Devin's concept is that Every nutcracker he's ever performed in, or he's ever seen, or he's ever been a ballet master on, it's almost like he took little notes. Almost like he knew in his heart he was gonna do a nutcracker one day. All right, here we go. As the clock ticks down towards December, you can track more of the company's progress on our website, kcpt.org.